So I'll go now to our uh, sermon. I don't have a PowerPoint, but um, my title is actually Power in Powerlessness. So it is a uh, irony. So how can you have power in powerlessness? In this time of elections, uh, we have, we see a lot of people campaigning for an office and uh, you see their banners, you see their ads on TV, you see them talk. And it's always a projection of how well they are, how good they are if they become a president or a senator, uh, I'm sorry, a senator, a senator, a vice president, and they project themselves as know-it-all, can do it all, can solve it all, the best choice, the only choice, and a lot of things that they say about themselves. So we have this impression that uh, they are actually, we, we have to base our, our choice on their abilities, their intelligence, their background, their learning, and everything else. In other words, they want us to see them as the best choice based on their own abilities. And it's just probably the way things ought to be done. Humanly speaking, that's how it is, you know? Someone who's able, okay? But I will show you in this next story that we will be reading in Judges, wherein there is a, a person also, a nation led by a person, and the, the, the circumstances, the way things have unfolded in the story is just not the way we may have expected. So I would like now to go to uh, our story, which is the story of Gideon. Kung alam niyo yung Gideon, hindi ko masyadong kilala si Gideon noon. Pero familiar ko sa Gideon, yung Gideon Bibles. So, nung tinawag po ako sa, sa church noon, yun yung Bible ko. Hardcover pa, at naalala ko, Gideon Bible. Yan ho ay isang, uh, they are an organization that distribute Bible uh, to, to hotels in the hope that whoever stays in the hotel would actually read the Bible and have an encounter with the Lord. So, but Gideon is actually a man in the Bible. And before we go to our main story, I just would like to give you a background. In Judges, um, the Israelites, as you know, in Exodus, they were delivered from the Egyptians. They went through the Red Sea. So all of these miracles. And after that, the Ten Commandments were given. And the primary commandment, or the first four commandments, is actually about God. And I am your God. You shall not have any other gods before me. That's a primary command. Why is it so primary? Because Israelites have lost their true allegiance in the God that has delivered them. It is ironic, we might think, that after such a miraculous de deliverance from the Red Sea, you know, the Red Sea was divided into two, so they were able to pass through. And yet, Israel, Israel easily forget God. Should we say this of Israelites only, or is it true for us as well? How true is it for us that oftentimes we forget God, and we have other gods before Him? So Israel, uh, during the time of the Judges, worshipped the God of the Amorites. The nation no longer listened to God, the God that they knew, and they fell into idolatry. So when we say idolatry, this worshiping the God of the Amorites, meaning to say these are gods, na are created gods. This could be in the form of mga created idols, mga uh, different forms of gods. And that's what happened because of their being out parang pinabayaan sila ng saglit ng Diyos, okay? Now, who are the Midianites? 
The Midianites are people descended from from one the one of Abraham's sons. So, ang lineage nila ni Midianites sa kalaban ng mga Israelites ng time na to are actually from the same lineage of Abraham. Okay? However, the relationship that they had with the Midianites is that they 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 were like enemies. The army of the Midianites was far bigger and that they could not be counted. And description po sa kanila were like locusts. Okay? Sa atin, kung sinabi mong locusts, wala tayong idea nun no? like locusts. But if you live in a, in in the place where may mga palay, may mga ganun, then you have yung mga balang. You know, if you have seen what that is like, it's really a lot of grasshoppers na malalaki, ha? Balang tapos, they eat everything uh, in their way. They consume the agricultural produce. But in terms of the army, ganyan karami ang mga army ng mga Midianites. And as a result, because of their power, they were very cruel to the Israelites. They were like bullies in, in our modern term. Okay? Uh, wala pang bully ng time na yun, the term. Pero, they were bullying. What they what they did was they destroyed all of Israel's cattle, their livestock, and all of agricultural produce. So, magtatanim ang Israel ng kanilang mga wheat and everything, and they raised their uh, food, their, their their sheep, and everything. And then yun ay mga Midianites. Hindi nila kukunin at kakainin. Kundi, papatayin lang. Okay? So, iba yung kinuha at kinain ng mga kalaban. Iba rin yung sinunog, sinira, pinatay, at hayaan ng dyan So that's how it is. And of course, because of that, because of the suffering, again, Israel cried out to God. As they cried out in their suffering, God gave them a message that they will be delivered through the leadership of our men, who is Gideon. Okay? Do you think Gideon was chosen because he was a great man? A valiant man? Or was Gideon actually a weakling in your in faith? You know what? As I discovered, Gideon was not an extraordinary man. He was actually a man very ordinary, someone we will not choose, but for some reason God chose him. Okay? And the message to him was, the Lord is with you. Interesting. Because that message, the Lord is with you to Gideon, was actually the same message that Mary received when the angel said to Mary, the Lord is with you. Okay? Gideon was a man lacking in faith in God. He actually bargained with God and tested him by asking a miracle. Is it true na kayo pinipili niyo ako? Is it true na i-deliver niyo ang Israel and you will um, free Israel from the enemies of the Midianites, the Amorites, and all? Hindi siya makapaniwala. So what did he do? He tested God. How did he test God? Sabi niya, Panginoon, kung totoo lang, i-deliver mo ang Israel at, at uh, ako ang magiging uh, pinuno ng ganitong pangyayari, okay? ito ang hihingin ko sa'yo. This is what I'm going to ask of you. Itong fleece, ilalagay ko po dito sa lupa. Sa umaga, gusto kong makita na basa lahat ang lupa pero itong fleece na to ay tuyong-tulong alam niyo naman ang fleece it, it actually uh, holds a lot of water di ba? so yun ang hiningi niya why was he asking about this? because he was actually very weak a word from God that he, that he heard is not enough you know the Lord is with you for us it's a great encouragement it was for Mary but for Gideon it was not and it's so, hindi it, 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 na nangyari, kinabukasan, no? Ginanyan-ganyan ni Gideon yung fleece, 
I was dry. Tuyo-tuyo. Samantala yung parang umulan sa gilid niya. Pero sabi niya, uh, isa pa, sabi niya. Isa pa, sabi niya. Huwag uh, kayong magalit, pero hihingi pa ako ng isang milagros. Sabi niya, o sige, ito naman daw gusto kong mangyari. Ang nagdidicted, you remember, was not God, okay? It was actually Gideon setting the condition. Okay? So, sabi niyo, sige, ganito ulit. Ito na naman yung fleece. Gusto ko po lahat tuyo, pero sa ilalim, basa. Okay? So, but as the story goes in chapter 6, ganun na ang nangyari. So, it was a confirmation from God that indeed, God was with him through the miracles that uh, Gideon asked. So if a person would have faith, I think it would be very easy to just go ahead when you hear the command of God to go, I'm with you, to go. But I think we can see that Gideon had a lot of doubts. Why? First is the army was so large. Okay? In, Pag, pag, pag pinag-usapan lang po yung army, okay? Army, these are armed men. They were four times the size of Israel's army. And Israel's army was 32,000. So, bilang yun, 32,000, ang dami nun, no? Pero ang mga media na sa kalaban niya was times four. Sino magaling sa mga dito? Times four po yun. So, ano, mga... 100, 128,000. So, yun ang condition. Now we go to, uh, yun situation, sorry. So now we go to chapter 1, uh, chapter 7 and verse 1. At dito po na natin itutuloy yung kwento. So tingnan po natin ang Judges 7, verse 1. So early in the morning, Jeroboam, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Harod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Mori. Verse 2. The Lord said to Gideon, Ano sabi ng Panginoon? You have too many men. Saglit lang, ano? Parang, ba nagpapatawa ang Diyos dito? Di ba one-fourth lang ang size ng, ng ano, army ng Israel? Kung kakalabanin namin yung one-fourth, hindi ba dapat eh, dagdagan po ng at least times four din. Okay? Parang do, hindi lang pantay, pero sana, kung talagang mananalo ang isang army like this, right? there are 32,000, should at least be 150,000. Di ba? Para manalo. Huwag yung pantay, kasi better armed ang mga ano eh, mga Midianites eh, with all their camels and all. But look, you have too many men for me to deliver Midian to their hands. What is that telling us? No? Hey, something is happening here. Something that boggles the mind. In order that Israel may not boast against me that her strong strength her own strength has saved her, announced unto the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, about 10,000 remain. Two-thirds! No, no, no. Okay? If you were Gideon, if you were Gideon, what would you feel? What would you think? You know? Nanginginig ka na nga, hindi ka na makapaniwala na i-deliver ang iyong enemy sa, sa, sa iyo. Yeah. Kaya ka nga humihingi ng mga milagro kasi hindi ka na makapaniwala eh. Ito pa ang mangyayari, di ba? So ilang percent na yan, di ba? Two-thirds is gone from your army. At sabi, those who tremble may fear. No, so it's okay, kung sino natatakot, no. So what does that mean? That two thirds. No. Talagang takot sila sa dami naman ng kalaban nila. Okay. Now continuing on in 
But the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Sandali lang. So again, if you were Gideon, what would you be thinking? No? Siguro sabi ni Gideon, ano bang binigisip ng Panginoon? No? But if you were Gideon, wouldn't this actually make you tremble even more? Okay? So sabi ng, ano, okay, take them down to the water and I will sift them for you there. So it's actually God sifting those who will go to battle and those who will not. So, this one shall go with you. He shall go, but, but if I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. Okay. But let me go back to yung uh, statement dun sa verse 2 because I think that's uh, important to highlight. Pwede po tayo sa verse 2. Okay. The reason why God says there are too many men and you have to reduce is that in order that Israel may not boast against me that her own strength has saved me. This is actually the reason as far as God is concerned why he had to reduce them so much. Why is God concerned about that? Is God concerned about his own glory? Is God concerned about his own ego? Is God concerned about being praised? Or is God concerned about Israel losing sight of the fact that they needed Him? Okay? Remember, idolatry is the main problem. God is making sure they don't give credit to their upcoming victory to themselves. Idolatry is not only bowing before inanimate objects of worship or pledging allegiance to other spirits and gods. It is not only about giving more importance to material things. It is, it is also not prior, prioritizing, for example, relationships over God. The more sinister form of idolatry is actually giving ourselves credit for what we truly have no power to do. Okay? Idolatry, idolatry, Brian. When we give credit to ourselves that we have no power actually of creating or doing or making happen, making something happen, then it is a form of idolatry. When we forget the power and the grace of God supplying us all of our needs, it is actually an idolatry. Notice the word, boast against me. It's a very strong word, okay? Why is God saying that? Because Israel has done that. They have been boasting against God when they accomplish something and they don't give God the credit. They always give, it, give, they give credit to their own intelligence, to their own skills, their own know-it-all attitude. It's actually pride. Okay? So there is a constant danger that if we don't rec recognize what God has done, what God has supplied, we make ourselves gods before the true God. When we think we create something, a situation, we are successful in something, and it is because of us, we are actually taking the place of God. So I think that's important to uh, stress. Okay. Now let's go for, uh, forward again. Gonzalo, next, please. Next verse. Okay, here, separate those who lap the water with their tongues like a dog from those who kneel down to drink. So this, remember, sabi ng una is yung natatakot, sige, uh, okay lang, alis kayo, ano kayo sumama sa, ar sa laban. And then, pagkatapos nun, one third was left, and then sabi nito, na hindi yung marami-rami pa yan, so separate those who lap the water with their tongues like a dog. So they were brought to a, a, uh, to a like a river or stream, uh, and then, uminom sila. Kung sino yung nag-meal at uminom, yun ang mawawala. Pero yung sino yung kumuha, nakatayo, at parang uminom na 
sinasalo lang yung tubig sa tila. Yun ang pipiliin ko. Sabi niya. Okay? Now, is there a as, is there something there about having to kneel and drink and having to get water and just stand up and drink? Some commentaries say that yung mga nakatayo ng umiinom are actually the watchful ones, the brave ones. Okay? But actually, that's missing the point. God is actually just removing Reducing. That's the point of the open. Wala kinalaman sa abilidad ng mga Israelites and all. Because if you come to think of it, those who kneel are actually oh, they're like praying, they're more humble, they're more. Di ba pati natin interpret na ganon? But just this is just a way in which God just eliminates. And in fact, doon sa natitilang uh, mga 10,000 plus pa, no? Um, na natira. Let's go to the next one. 300 men not with their hands to their mouths. All the rest got down their knees to drink. Okay? So the Lord said, with the 300 men that not, I will save you and give you the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go each to his own place. Again, if you were Gideon, you have, you're facing what? 128,000 army, and you have this 300. Kanino ka magtitiwala? Kanino ka magtitiwala? Sa army mo? Sa sayo? Or sa Diyos? Remember, in chapter 6, the Lord is with you. So, this is the point. This is the point why God had to reduce. Because they will think that they have done it on their own. But this one, the 300, under normal circumstances, humanly speaking, it is impossible to defeat the enemy. Okay? It is totally impossible. Under normal circumstances, there's no way, there's just no way Israel could win. And that's the point. We have no way to be successful in life through all our difficulties, through our problems, if we rely on our own. But if we recognize that we cannot on our own do it, just like this particular case, we would rely not on our connections, not on our relatives, not so much in our families. It's not, not saying that they can't help, they're not important, but in the final analysis, our life's victory is dependent upon God. Okay? So, let's go further. So again, remember 32,000 men and again 300. You know what? God reduced the army of Israel to 99%. Less than 1% actually was left. If you count it, uh, to, to, the, to, to the exact figure, it was less than 1% from the region of 32,000. So this is really amazing. Okay? So the lesser we are full of ourselves, the more that God can work with us. Okay? Let me repeat that. The lesser we are full of ourselves, the more that God can work in it with us. Remember John, when he baptized Jesus, he said, I must decrease, but he must increase. And I think this is very appropriate when it comes to our Christian lives. We have to, we have, we have to understand it. We have to be less and less of ourselves. We have to be powerless, we have to be weak. Now let's go further. Now the camp of Midian lay below him in the valley. Next verse. So Gideon, uh, during that night, the Lord said to Gideon, get up, go down against the camp, because I'm going to give it into your hands. This is the instruction of the Lord. It's a very general instruction. 
sabi lang niya, punta ka doon, punta kayo doon, during the night, and sabi, I'm going to give it into your hands. That's a general instru- instruction. Next, if you're afraid to attack, bakit na naman na sabi, bakit inunahan ng Diyos si Gideon? Go down to the camp with your, with your servant, Bura. Okay? Takot kasi si Gideon. That's why, inunahan na siya ng Panginoon. If you, if you are afraid, then okay, sige, take Bura with you. So what was actually happening is that pinapunta si Gideon sa camp para to spy on what's happening, okay? And listen to what they are saying. Afterward, we will be encouraged to attack the camp. Take note of the word, you will be encouraged. Why? Because Gideon was discouraged. He lacked confidence. He just was falling apart. He cannot just do it. And God was actually encouraging him so many times. So he and Pura, his servant, went down to the outpost of the camp. Okay? Was, was, was God angry at Gideon for being so weak? So isn't it interesting that inunahan pa siya ng Panginoon? Kung natatakot ka sige, dalhin mo si Pura. Samahan ka niya. You might think, oh, God would do this, but in this particular case, the Midianites, the Amalekites, Amalek, Amalek, and all the other Eastern peoples had settled in the valley thick as the dust. Their camels could no, could, could no more be counted than the sand and the seashore. It's just an expression that says, there's so much, there's so many of them. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend his dream. So he was at the camp ng mga Midianites. And he heard this. Nagpiparang usap-usapan, may chismis na naririnig. Na lahat sila pinag-usapan. Sabi ng tao, I had a dream, he was saying, a round loaf, loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. Okay, that was a dream. A loaf of barley. Gano kalaki ang loaf of barley? Parang pandibara lang, di ba? And the dream was such a, you know, gumulong at nasira yung tent. Um, something's, uh, it's an amazing dream, you know. His friend responded, This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. Yun na ang usap-usapan sa kanila pala. Eh? Paano nangyari yung dream na yan? God put it in the minds of the enemy to have that dream. Diba? At yun ang narinig ni Gideon. Narinig na ito. Narinig na naman. Pinag-uusap-usapan. Kahit saan siya magpunta doon sa camp, narinig niya the same story. Narinig niya na medyo natatakot na yung mga Midianites, the Amalekites. So what? It was to encourage the very weak in faith na si Gideon. Next, when Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, what? he worshipped. This seems to, be, seems to be a turning point in the life of Gideon. From doubt to a full submission that yes, you are God. You deserve to be worshipped. You will deliver. You will do as you have said. And it was a moment for Gideon Parang aha moment niya that struck him somehow that made him guilty for not trusting enough that made him <coughs> bow down. Alam niyo yun, yung parang such a heavy thought but because of his all of his doubting that he finally realized it. When he realized his lack of faith 
when he realized that he was not trusting God enough, when he doubted that God is indeed God, in spite of all the miracles that he saw, when he finally realized it, there you go, he worshipped God. So, God wasn't angry with him. God did not strike him down. Okay? But God allowed the process to just unfold. And for the sake of Gideon, for Gideon to realize that indeed, the Lord is with him. Isn't it interesting that sometimes we know the Word of God? We know the promises of God. We know our Bibles. But we haven't come to the point wherein we believed what is written. We know what we need to do, but we do not believe God somehow. There's a doubt, there's discouragement, there's something that prevents us from just embracing and just surrendering. But when that time comes, we come to the point where we fall on our knees and we worship God. So this is what happened. So this has helped Gideon overcome his unbelief, overcome his rejection of God's instruction. Yeah, he will do it, but actually deep inside him is not convinced. God Gideon the faith that he lacked. And so we can also ask God, when we lack faith, that he can provide the circumstances, the different people who come to, can come to us and aid us, because God would just want to do that very much for us. If we lack faith, God will give it. Remember there's a story in the New Testament. God help, Lord help my unbelief. When Jesus Christ was there, he wanted to heal. Uh, I think it was his son. He said, I believe you, but help my unbelief. Same with us. We believe, but deep inside us, we cannot make ourselves believe, but God will give us that faith. Now, let's go to the next verse. Dividing the 300 men into three companies, okay? I think, can we go back to verse 15? Okay. So, so, he returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get out! The Lord has given them a get cut to your hands. He was talking to the Israelites. Actually, he was talking to the 300 people. Um, okay, then, then, then verse, uh, next verse, please. Dividing the 300 men into three companies, okay, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them with torches inside. What's happening? What's happening? Trumpets? Aren't we going to war? Okay. Kailangan ko pa natin gawing weapons itong trumpets natin? Empty jars? Wala man lang tubig? Kasama dyan? Torches. Yeah, maybe it makes sense, but aren't we going to ambush them? Why the need for torches? But how about the torches? You would you be an easy target? But these are the instruments of war. Again, unthinkable, you know? When you think about power, Think about armies, weapons of mass destruction. You have chariots, you have arrows, you have swords, you have trumpets. Ah, trumpets? Okay. 
300 men. So we were divided. Now let's move on. Watch me. He told them, follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I would do. Continuing on. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp blow yours and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. So he gave them instructions. They may, be see, they may have surrounded the army of the Midianites. Okay? They were in groups of three. They took a tiny one. They sat at the Vito. They sat. They remained here. Just follow what I'm going to do. Just imitate what I'm going to do. And then this is the instruction. When I blow my trumpet, do the same thing, okay? And notice, for the Lord and for Gideon, well, you may ask the question here, why for Gideon? Aren't we just talking about humility here? Aren't we just talking about not giving credit to person, but entirely to God? My, my, uh, my thinking is that because the dream that the... It, enemies had was about Gideon and his sword okay and that God delivering so main character to sa si Gideon is a dream that was makala uh, diba so I think it is for that reason that his name was there okay continuing Gideon and the hundred men with him re reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch middle watch is about what, 12 o'clock, okay, midnight, when everybody was sleeping, when the camp was quiet, and of course the Midianites would not think of Israel attacking, I say they will be easily defeated, so when all was quiet, and all was silent, and they were in, having a very peaceful sleep, was, you know, just after they had changed the guard, because it na pagod na yung first shift that was in isang pagpasok na okay they blew their trumpets and broke the jars were in their hands okay. so what is the effect of this when you suddenly hear a trumpet okay trumpet is like a call for war in other words it's like an alarm okay and when you hear one okay na yan but when you hear several like 300 they know 300 trumpets. Listen, the 300 men were not soldiers in that they were good swordsmen. What he brought was like an orchestra of trumpets. So, so they blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. So if you were sleeping, what would that sound like? Yeah? So what happened was it created confusion. The Midianites thought that the Israelites were already attacking and they were in the middle of the camp. Napapasak na yung mga kung anong bagay-bagay doon. So that's what they were hearing, the shattering of those jars, and they thought that Israelites have actually overcome them. And it brought everything into confusion for the Midianites. That's what happened. Next. First. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding it in their right hand. The trumpets, they were to blow. And they shouted, A sword for the Lord and, and for Gideon. Remember, you had a, if you were the enemy, you just had a dream. Okay? That dream was talagang kalat. And you were already afraid. And this thing happened. And you say, It's true. It's happening. Now they're in the middle of our camp. They're destroying everything. They're killing our people. And a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. They heard the sword. Alam ba? Wala sila ng sword. Technically, di ba? But that's what they shouted. Maybe they have. Okay, that's, but that's not what they used. So a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Verse 21. While each man held his position around the camp, can you see a lot of ironies in this story? Things we never expect, 
things that we would never do if we were an army. They stood their ground. Okay? When they held their, their position around the camp, they didn't move, they didn't attack. But then what happened? All the units ran, crying out as they fled. So they were so confused. They thought they were defeated. They thought they were actually being killed, that they had to flee. Next verse. When the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other. Okay? Kasi akala rin, nasa gitna na yung mga Israelites eh. So hindi na nila alam kung sino yung kalaban nila. So they fought against each other. With their swords. So nagpatayan silang mismong magkakasama, magkakagrupo, magkakalahi. The army fled to Beth Shita towards their, their, as far as the border of the Mihola near Tabat. Okay. So we can end it there. But look what happened. It's an amazing thing. You, know? you would never expect a war being waged using trumpets and the torch. When the torch were lighted, I can imagine na. Uh, Remember they held their position and they were smashing akala ng mga Israelites. Guards lang yung mga nasa labas. Torches. Mayroon nang nakapasok na iba pa. Okay? Hindi gumagalaw yung mga torches around. Ibig sabihin, ano lang yan? Na-corner na sila. And they didn't know what to do. Kasi hindi gumagalaw eh. As if, oh, paglalapit kayo sa amin, mas marami pa kami susunod uh, sa inyo. So the meetings were taken by surprise. And, uh, yun, success came. I want us also to notice that, remember I said the general instruction? The general instruction by God was just to go and God will give the Midianites into the hands of Israel. There were no details. It was actually Gideon who just thought about how it will be done. Okay? So I think the lesson here is that we don't always need to know the details of our journey. We don't always need to know what we have to I mean, I mean the details of everything in our lives. What we need is a general direction to take. Okay? So the commands of God, the principles of God, in so many ways are just general directions. How we do it is sometimes freedom. It is, we are given freedom in the methods that we use. Okay? Of course, everything in the context of prayer and faith. Now let me just cite an example. Uh, the, the, the general principle, for example, is uh, in your going, uh, make disciples of all nations. That's a general principle. How we do it is not always specified in the Bible. Okay? So I know a church, for example, kilala ko hu yung pastor, yung tatay niyo hu niya, ay kanyag ding isang pastor. Okay. They are a member of a Baptist church, and this church that they had uh, being pastored by his dad has grown. And then this son, who is also a pastor, wanted to start another church. Okay. Of course, you know, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not having a fight. They're not a division. Except that it seems like this. The younger pastor wants to start another church. It's just the, the vision that he has. And the father was uh, taken aback. I might mention a pag-isip siya. Bakit? Bakit ganun? Gusto ko na nang mag-retire. Ano siya nang to take over my position and be the lead pastor in this church. It's already big. With a school even. 
but somehow the son had a different vision. Okay? And you know what? In eight years, yung malit na church na start ng anak niya has grown to about eight different areas of ministry. Kaya sabi ng tatay, well, I never realized that when God closes a door, in that case, the door was that hindi ayaw na nung anak niya magpasar ng church niya. God opens a bigger door. Actually, that is a bigger door in the sense na they still have partnership, but if he did not allow that, there would be no other eight churches that would have grown out of that. In eight years, okay, we have about six or, or more. So I think about six, okay, but in eight years, they had six different ministries. How a ministry is done is not always very clear, but that a ministry is to be done is very clear, okay? I'd like us to probably look at the symbolism of the trumpet. The trumpet symbolizes the shout of faith and allegiance to God. The shout is a shout of conviction. If you are a part of a cheering squad, cheering, cheering squad, for example, when you say, go team, go, Hindi pwede yung go team go. Lalo man lalo tayo, go team go. Hindi you know? ganoon. When you shout, as in the, the trumpet, it symbolizes conviction, allegiance to God, faith in God, total conviction, total faith, total belief that God will deliver. It is about confession. Okay? Our when we have baptism, we usually pray and we usually want to hear what the new member would say about the confession. We want to hear it. It's not enough na nagdasal siya on his own. We want to hear it. We want to make it public. And if you're the one being baptized, you have to say it with conviction. Okay? The jars. The jars are like our flesh ourselves that need to be broken and to let out what it contains. And you know what? The jars were empty except for the torches that were in them. So, shouldn't we also be jars, empty jars, so that the light of God or Christ, symbolized by the torch, is present in us. And it has to be broken. In this case, they had to shatter it so that they can then raise the torches. When you look at the symbolism of that, you know, we have to be broken. Our flesh has to be broken so that the torch can be used. The torch is God Himself, Jesus Christ Himself, the light who will overcome darkness. In short, Israel was finally victorious and a powerful enemy, much, much bigger than they were, fled and were defeated. How does this story apply to us? And I'm sure that as we were reading the story, I'm sure you had your own thoughts about, yeah, this applies to me. Yeah, this verse is really talking to me, speaking to me. Let me just talk to you about a testimony that I heard. His name is Jasper. And he was not even a college student. He did not enter college today. But one night, he was invited to speak. And he spoke to tell about his life as a witness, as a testimony and he stood before pastors, even foreign pastors. And he said to the group, hindi ko po ma-imagine, natatayo po ako sa inyo, ang mga pastors na hindi tingala ko. But God somehow made circumstances in such a way that I can't do this. Kung ako lang po, sabi niya, ayaw ko. 
mayroong dahilan ho sa ginawa ng Panginoon at ako'y tinawag na magsalita sa inyo. I'm here before you. And he talked about how his life was as a one who separated from home because ang gulo gulo ng buhay niya, umalis siya, galing po din siya. But, mas naging magulo ang kanyang buhay, wala siyang Diyos, hindi na kilala ang Diyos. He got into drugs. Sabi niya, lahat ng buhay, alam ko yan. Pinakamura sa pinakamahal at sumuha ko yan. But somehow God turned his life around. Circumstances were such that God made him, gave, gave him an encounter that changed his life. And now he's serving. Not only was he a very successful may meron na siyang business ngayon that makes him stand on his own. Sabi niya ngayon, kung ano gusto kong kainin, makakain ko na. Pakikinig huh? po natin yung napaka-ilangan ko nun, di ba? In other words, before, his life was such an, a mess. Pero sabi niya, hindi ko sa kakainan ko sabi niya, alam niyo kung bakit siguro ako hindi nakapagtapos ng college? Kasi pag napag, na, nakapagtapos po ako ng college, sasabihin ko, galing sa talino ko to, kaya ako nakabangon mo din. Galing sa talino ko, kaya ako nakapagpatayo ng lima pang other businesses. Sabi niya. Pero tama ko siguro yun. Sabi niya, nagpapasalamat ako na hanggang high school lang natapos ko. Kasi hindi ko man iisipin na itong nagagawa ko ngayon ay dahilan sa aking sariling kakailan. That's a powerful story. When we look at ourselves, especially us who have been, who are learned, who have lots of skills, who have lots of resources, it's very easy to say, oh, I'm successful because I studied very hard. I did this, I did this because I'm intelligent. We forget God. When we do that, that's idolatry. Okay? Idolatry is not worshiping other gods, but making ourselves as gods. And we can see from the story, I'm just summarizing that the smaller the army was better for the Israelites. And so the smaller we are before ourselves, the better for God. The less we are filled with our own selves, our own know-it-all, can-do-it-all, the less, the more, the better we become in our service to God. The more we have in terms of our success, the more we need to give glory to God. Also, we have learned that all of us probably started without much faith. Okay? We lack faith. But in this story, we have learned that God can supply the faith that we need. God could use someone who does not have faith. We would not think of it that way. God can use if you have faith. Yeah? Could God use someone who did not have faith to begin with and made the circumstances of his life in such a way that he gained that faith? He dropped, kneeled, worshiped God. Our victory in life is not won by skills, by weapons by more knowledge in the scriptures, by how much you know, we know, how much we have studied. But it is reliance and faith in God. The opposite of that is actually pride. And God hates pride. Destruction comes before, or fall comes before pride. And if there's just one lesson, or if it's to summarize the whole lesson, the whole message that we have seen today is that 
we Christians can experience great miracles in our lives when we recognize that in fact we are powerless and that we need God. We need God. We need to rely on Him. We need to look at everything as God working in our lives and through others. So it is, it is our weakness that is taken away wherein God's power can take all over. We Are we weak? Doesn't mean we're weak that we can't do anything. We can do something. But the weakness here is an attitude wherein we know our limits. And that everything else, in fact, is from God. Okay? So that is the important thing here. We need to realize that in the end, we cannot do anything. Remember what Jesus said? I am the vine that you are, the, you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. It doesn't mean you cannot drive. It doesn't mean you cannot eat. It doesn't mean you cannot do anything. But when it comes to the real things in life, to the things that matter, especially our salvation, we are zero. Without God, we can do nothing. So I think that this story helps us to realize that and that in the end we give God the glory. We will not boast on our own, but we will boast in the power of God working in our powerlessness. So let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful story of Gideon that you have recorded in your word. We thank you for this opportunity that we have learned from you, that your spirit has moved through us, and that there is much to be gained from surrendering to you. We also realize, Father, that you work in ways that we would not normally think as logical. But if we trust you, if we follow your word, if we obey the words of Jesus Christ, all will be well. Help us to avoid the culture of the world wherein the self is so important. Help us to avoid pride. Help us to avoid putting others down, especially in our church. Help us to encourage one another. As you have encouraged Gideon, we should also encourage one another so that our faith will grow together. Thank you for making us realize that we're nothing without you. But thank you also for the fact that we have Jesus Christ. And in him, we can have power. We can have strength that we need to overcome our life's difficulties, problems, pain, suffering. We know, Father, that we need to give you glory. It's not about us. It's all about you. Jesus Christ, we need